I'll be taking you guys through all the steps you should take to unlock insane performance gains while achieving the lowest latency possible, no matter what graphics card you have or other PC specs. This will benefit you, so please drop a like and subscribe. Before we dive in, update your GPU drivers. Most people these days use NVC Lean Install. It's a free app that removes NVIDIA bloat by allowing you to customize and select what driver components you want installed, removing certain bloatware like this on screen. However, I don't like to mess around with my NVIDIA driver components as I actually use them. Instead, I prefer to use the GeForce Experience app, or even better, the new NVIDIA app, which I'll talk about later. I download the latest drivers by clicking that green download button. Having the latest drivers is best practice, as outdated drivers can cause crashes and performance issues. Next, let's optimize our NVIDIA settings. For most people, you should be able to just right-click on your desktop and find the NVIDIA control panel there. If it's not there, you can head to the Windows Store, search for it, and it should pop up. Once inside, click on the middle option and then click Take me there to the 3D settings. First up is image scaling. This adds a special upscaling technology paired with a sharpening filter to output an upscaled, sharpened image of a lower resolution, giving a decent performance boost but making your game look worse. If you use this setting, you're much better off using the improved technology DLSS for this type of FPS boost. Ambient occlusion will add enhanced shadows and environmental lighting in your games, which looks pretty, but I turn this setting off as it lowers FPS significantly. Anisotropic filtering enhances the visual quality of game textures when your camera is at a steep angle. The higher you set this filter, the less blurry the textures will look. However, I turn this off for more FPS. Anti-aliasing modes help eliminate jagged edges on game objects by adding a smooth filter, but I turn these off as they cost a lot of FPS. Background application. Max frame rate allows you to set a max FPS for background applications, but most of you should turn this off as it's only beneficial in specific scenarios. CUDA GPUs let you specify one or more GPUs to use. This is best left on all unless you want to use a specific GPU if you have multiple. Also ensure that the CUDA fallback policy is left on the driver default to avoid issues. DSR Factors, or Dynamic Super Resolution, is an outdated technology that helps improve image quality by rendering the image and scaling it at a higher resolution. I wouldn't use this as it hurts your FPS, Instead, use DLSS. Low latency mode can massively reduce latency in competitive games by removing the rendering queue between the CPU and GPU, resulting in lower system latency. I love this setting, so I keep it on. However, for my PC, Ultra lowered my frame rate, so I keep it on on for that reason. You need to try it out and see what works for you. Max frame rate allows you to cap your FPS to a max setting, but I set this to off as you can set the max frame rate cap in most games. Monitor technology will only be visible if your monitor supports NVIDIA G-Sync. NVIDIA G-Sync adjusts your monitor's refresh rate to become dynamic, solving issues like screen tearing. Make sure to set it up properly. A popular website, Blur Busters, confirmed that a capped frame rate of 3 FPS less than your refresh rate gives the lowest latency for G-Sync and V-Sync. Multi-frame sampled, anti-aliasing removes jagged edges and smooths out graphics, but I turn this off as it costs a lot of FPS. OpenGL settings allow you to choose specific GPUs for OpenGL. These settings are best left on default. Power Management Mode lets you choose between power and performance on your graphics card. After testing, the performance setting didn't increase my FPS much, only temperatures and power usage. This is from testing on my high-end PC, so test on your PC to see what's best for you. I keep this on default. Preferred Refresh Rate allows you to set your monitor's refresh rate. It should be left on the highest available setting. Additionally, ensure that Windows Display settings are set to the highest refresh rate too. 
Shader cache size stores any shaders from the game for use later. The larger the shader cache, the less likely you are to regenerate shaders, resulting in better performance. However, this uses disk space. Most people set this to 10 GB as it helps with frame rate stutter. I keep it on default as I haven't noticed much difference. Texture filtering settings allow you to decide between performance, quality or a balance. I found the best settings to be on allow high performance with tri-linear optimization turned on for an FPS boost. Test these settings to see what works for you. Threaded optimization allows your computer to utilize several processor cores at once. The best setting for this is Auto allowing NVIDIA to figure out if you have a multi-core or hyper-threaded CPU and give you the best setting. Vertical Sync Virtual Reality Pre-Rendered Frames and other 3D settings should be left on default. These are all global settings. To use these settings for a specific game, head to the Program tab and select the game. If any settings don't work out, you can restore them back to default via the button at the top right. Configure Surround. Keep the span displays with Surround unchecked. For the fix setting, keep it on Auto or select your specific GPU. Adjust Desktop Color Settings is where you can change your color settings to improve game look. Increase the digital vibrance for more vibrant colors. View HDCP status and digital audio should be left on default. Adjust desktop size and position. I got the highest FPS at native resolution with no scaling. However, I play with a stretched resolution sometimes, so I keep this setting on full screen. For perform scaling, choose the GPU setting with the box ticked for override. These settings depend on whether you play a stretched resolution or not. Setup G-Sync will only be visible for those with a G-Sync monitor. I utilize it with my monitor. If you have multiple monitors, set them up here. Video color and image settings should be left on default. NVIDIA's new app currently in beta is an improved GeForce Experience app with better functionality and new features. You can use both the NVIDIA app and the NVIDIA control panel together. In the NVIDIA app under Global Settings, I turn off RTX Digital Vibrance, leave CUDA GPUs on default, turn off DSR factors and image scaling, keep low latency on, turn off max frame rate, use G-Sync if supported, leave power management on normal or default, and keep shader cache on default. Vertical Sync and VR options are also kept on default. If these settings don't work out, restore them to default. NVIDIA Profile Inspector lets you configure hidden NVIDIA settings. Download it from GitHub. I configure Potato Graphics for FPS boost with lower graphical quality. Select the game, change anti-aliasing to 0x08, replay mode, turn off driver-controlled LOD bias in texture filtering, and configure how potato you want the graphics to be. Apply the changes and you'll have potato graphics. Revert them if you don't like them by restoring settings to default.